All right, so this is just going to be my general impression of the film. I just got out of the theater roughly 45 minutes ago, so everything's relatively still fresh. Um, the, the later part of this video is going to be more spoiler intensive. I'll let you know when that point is. Um, and everything I'm about to say is, is subject to change uh, when I view the film multiple times whenever it comes out on DVD. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually go back and view this again in the theater. Um, but yeah, so my overall impression of the movie was sort of so-so. Um, I didn't bother reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man, the, the one that came out two years ago. Um, I liked that movie overall, but I felt it had a weak villain. I liked the development of Peter Parker as Spider-Man. I liked his relationship with um, Gwen Stacy. I liked the, t the chemistry between the, the actors. Um, and so I'll just start off with what I liked about the, this movie. Um, and just more of that, more development with, uh, you know, Peter Parker uh, and, and Gwen Stacy. I like how he's sort of uh, trying to take into consideration what um, Gwen's father had to say about not involving her, and you see him struggling internally, you know, uh, in his relationship with Gwen Stacy here, you know, can't, like, you know, the, the boundaries, you know, should he actually disobey um, the promise that uh, he made to her father um, upon his death, and that he should just avoid her altogether, but at the same time he loves her, you know, and, and he still, is try, you know, so he sort of at times tries to, like, you know, follow her as Spider-Man without, you know, directly coming into contact with her. So you see that that struggle throughout the film. And I, I really like that. And once again, the chemistry between the two leads is good overall. Um, so that's, that's obviously good. Um, the visual aspect of the film in terms of the cinematography was cool. Um, it was unique, I would say. And it was, it's, yeah, it, it was very visual. It was very... The camera work was good in terms of the tracking shots, at least at the very beginning um, during this uh, opening chase sequence. There weren't actually too many cuts. The camera, t uh, to my memory, it seemed to just sort of track onto Spider-Man a lot, a lot of cool angles, it and, it, and it looked very real. It didn't, like the background and everything that was zooming by, or, you know, whooshing by, um, actually, it looked pretty genuine. The, so the visuals overall were very good. I, there were, at times, were... Um, the slow motion was a bit overused, but um, yeah, overall I thought that the, um, the visuals were well done. It was it was well done. Now, the main and negative. First of all, I should say that Aunt May doesn't really have much of a point in this movie. Um, she, I, I I feel like they sort of wasted her character. I should say almost in both movies. I, I feel as if she's sort of been an underwhelming character in terms of her development and in terms of her impact on Peter. I don't know. I just I just wish there was more of that. Um, what else? And so, like the other villain, you know, like my problem with the first Amazing Spider-Man movie with the villain being sort of, you know, mediocre, you know, uh, uninspired. Well, you know, the problem is sort of amplified here. Going into this movie, you know, the, knowing that there were going to be three villains... Um, in this movie, uh, you know, and coming off the whole Spider-Man 3 thing, which I didn't hate as, you know, like as a lot of people did. I just thought that was sort of an adequate sequel to the, uh, the first two Spider-Man movies, which I thought were, you know, great. Like, the first one was great. This The second one was just amazing. One of probably my favorite superhero movie ever. But, um, you know, and I, I just felt that that would be, you know, too many villains in the movie, you know, especially since all three of them are brand new, as opposed to Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 3, where he's already sort of been in there, so it's really just two new characters, Sandman and Venom, and here it's sort of three brand new characters. That's what I thought, and really what we got is sort of a one, like a villain and a half out of three characters. What I mean by this, so, the only real villain in this movie that I liked, or th that I thought was fully, you know, fleshed out was Harry Osborn. Um, I definitely felt he had a decent amount of development. Um, uh, Norman Osborn had like no point in this movie either. Uh, he he didn't. I thought he was going to be more prominent, and he literally was in the movie for uh, like a, a two minute scene, and that was it. He didn't really serve all that much of a purpose. I wish he was in it more. Um, but Harry Osborn definitely did have you know a purpose, but I, I felt his his issue was more. Involving Oscorp than his, you know, his, uh, than his relationship with Spider-Man, um, in the sense that his con like his uh, character objective related more to, you know, taking back Oscorp from like the the greedy uh, chair heads that you know sort of locked him out and wanted to take control because they thought he wasn't ready. 
You know, I mean, he wants Spider-Man's blood because he thinks he that, that he's dying from like the same disease that his father had. Um, you know, overall, he's, he's definitely a serviceable villain. Nothing great, but you know, he, he was really fleshed out in comparison to the other two. Um, Electro, um, I didn't. He was also. I mean, I guess you could say he's developed um, before he undergoes his transformation into Electro, whatever his character's name was, Eddie or Mike or I don't even know what his name was. Um, it was overacted, um, really overacted to the point where he sort of like he admires Spider-Man after he saves him in the street, and I felt his performance was very artificial, showy, just just overacted. He's sort of like you know expressing to himself how he feels, which is both bad writing and just sort of a cheap way to try and express what the act, what the character's feeling or thinking by just saying it out loud. Nothing felt natural to me in his acting or in the character's behavior. And afterwards, like, I, what I had a problem with is once Electro gained his powers and was in Times Square or whatever, he um, literally was testing out his powers, and he was still, he's in the same exact scene, he was friendly, like, he's friendly with, enough with Spider-Man, like, he, did, he doesn't appear to be a threat, he doesn't view Spider-Man as much of a threat, and it's about being seen, like, his character or whatever is just sort of like, no one notices him or something, so... Like all, his his image is projected all over the screens in Mad in uh, sorry not Madison in uh, in Times Square, um, and it switches to Spider Man and all of a sudden he just wants to kill Spider Man. I felt his his anger towards Spider Man largely wasn't convincing or justified to me, at least it it, it just didn't feel convincing. So his character overall fell flat. And then you get to the Rhino character, and he was just, I, I wouldn't even, he's not even a character, he, he's not really even in the movie. Um, he's literally, his character is some Russian, so he's, a, he's a bald Russian guy who's in the middle of a, who's robbing some sort of Oscorp uh, stuff, some Oscorp orange serum that's in the back of a truck, and he's literally just shouting. That's like, that's his first scene. That which last like the opening chase sequence that he's in, he literally just shouts a bunch of a bunch of nonsense, and then he doesn't even reappear until the very end where he's actually in the Rhino outfit. But then you know he's only in it as Rhino for two minutes, and before it literally cuts to credits. After that, I mean that's not really a spoiler, but he's just like you know it just he, there was no fight scene between him and Spider-Man uh, in the suit at all, and they, they butchered it, um, hit the accuracy uh, in terms of the comics, to my knowledge. He's actually, Brother Rhino is actually supposed to be like a hunking giant that's that has superhuman strength, that's in like sort of a rhino suit. This guy just sort of in like a mech suit that looks like a rhino because it has a rhino horn on top of it. You know, it just, it, like, they butchered the character. It's not accurate at all towards the comics, to my knowledge. And he was just a complete waste. And I have absolutely no idea why the filmmakers decided to add him in. Now, with all that being said, the movie is still fairly, it's still entertaining and everything like that. But overall, I mean, it, it was sort of an, it, just, it was just okay. I, I mean, I liked, I definitely enjoyed the first Amazing Spider-Man movie quite a bit because of how they developed Peter and, you know, Gwen Stacy and everything. And even the villain, even um, the um, the lizard was, I think, better than, uh, aside from Harry Osborn, the, the lizard was better than both, um, you know, than, than Electro. And Rhino, I'm not even going to even mention as a real villain because he just did, he did nothing in the, in the film. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to talk about more of the spoiler-intensive stuff. So if you you know don't if you don't want the movie to be really spoiled for you, then I suggest you go no further at all. All right, so this is the spoiler intensive bit. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you don't want it to be spoiled for you, then uh, please go no further. Don't uh, turn off the video or whatever. Okay, so the first spoiler, minor spoiler, I'll talk about, I guess, is the fact that a woman named Felicia is in, in this movie. So it's implying that Felicia Hardy. Uh, will be a character in the in the next film or in the, in the you know upcoming films, um, and uh, I guess the decision to have like a no name actress portray her in this movie, um, I don't know. Maybe they'll change that, but I'm not sure. You know, I guess it's sort of risky to have, um, in, in my opinion, to have some unknown actress, uh, you know, portray uh, Felicia Hardy in this movie if they if they are in fact planning on having her in the next movie, um, you know, aside from just an Easter egg in this movie, if that's what they're planning on doing, 
then I, I would feel more comfortable if she was, you know, if that character were placed in the hands of a, 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 a well-known actress. So in that respect, I mean, I, I like the fact that they're including her. Uh, I think that's that'd be well, that'd be an interesting move. Um, but you know, and this is going to lead into my next point here, the next spoil, the big spoiler. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't quite know what to think about that. You know, I, I wish they would have had a, you know, used a well-known or at least a better-known actress than whoever they cast for Felicia in this movie. She had no real purpose or role, and it was just really a teaser character. I'm assuming for people who are really acclimated with the Spider-Man comics. I knew who she was. I'm sure a lot of people didn't know, you know, who this Felicia character was. She just works at Oscorp here. She didn't really have a big role. She's, you know, I don't know. Enough with that. Uh, the major spoiler is that um, uh, Gwen Stacy actually dies. Now, I actually knew, I almost wish it, I, I wouldn't have been, I, I wouldn't say I was spoiled, but um, someone told me that she does in fact die in the comics because... Um, Spider-Man tries to save her from falling off of a bridge and, you know, snaps or, uh, you know, uh, attaches a web to her neck to try and, or something like that to, or, um, and to try and stop her from falling and accidentally breaks her neck. That's not quite exactly how it happened. She's falling down like in the uh, power plant or whatever. She's falling down uh, from a great height or whatever and I think it just breaks her body instead of her neck or maybe it was her neck. I can't remember exactly, but whatever. That was a really impactful moment and a really ballsy move on behalf of the writer. Uh, I was not, definitely not expecting them, you know, even though I had some prior knowledge about what happened in the comics, I didn't really expect that to happen going into the movie. But as soon as I, there was some uh, foreshadowing with the um, police, her dad, uh, you know, in Peter's mind as he saw her with her family and whatever, you know, he got the vision. You, you, you see him seeing uh, her dead dad in her mind and, and that promise that he made to, for her to not get involved with, you know, him being Spider-Man. So in the back of my, in my, of my mind, I almost sort of knew or I shouldn't say new, but I was more expecting that after, you know, with this sort of foreshadowing occurring throughout the film. Um, the actual death scene sort of occurred in slow motion, so I almost, you know, I was actually really expecting it, so it didn't come off, you know, as quite a surprise, but it, I still felt the impact of, the, of that, you know, especially since I actually liked her character quite a bit. So I was actually really, you know, that, that was one of the few times I've, in a while that I've actually, you know, gotten distraught over someone dying in a movie, a character, you know, a good character dying. So that was really well done. That, that, that was one of the highlights of the whole, of the whole movie because it, for, I'm assuming most of the audience did not expect that to happen, even with the foreshadowing. So really emotionally impactful really well done moment uh, and I'm interested to see you know if, if uh, the Felicia Hardy love interest will play out in the upcoming film um, now the thing that was sort of weirded me out was the X-Men uh, scene after the credits and initially I was pissed off because I thought they were actually trying to tie this Spider-Man universe in with X-Men even though it's from Fox and you know Spider-Man's and Sony I actually thought they were trying to you know tie this in with that universe and you know I thought we were actually expected to be initiated with the X-Men you know, franchise that's already been out for several years at least now and that really pissed me off but then I read you know when I came back uh, home I read up that it was really just a, an actual teaser trailer or an actual scene in the upcoming X-Men movie which has absolutely nothing to do with Spider-Man which also pisses me off because it has nothing to do with this movie, and I would have much preferred to see some upcoming teaser or something of a, of you know of the villain for the next movie instead, you know, and th and that really pissed me off. The final spoiler I should mention uh, involves the backstory um, that's revealed about how uh, Peter's parents actually died. Um, I thought the information presented was definitely very insightful, and it you know revealed enough information about why. Um, Oscorp was Chase, or whoever it was, I'm, I'm assuming it was Oscorp and this uh, foreign military uh, oper you know, government, or, or I don't know, some, some organization that was after um, Richard Parker. Um, I, I definitely liked the plane sequence. Uh, I thought it was good, and I, they actually left it ambiguous to a fault, in that you see the plane crashing, but you don't see it exploding, so theoretically... Peter's parents could technically still be alive, and I mean that, you know, technical terms, because I remember, 
uh, somewhere in the comics that Peter's parents actually survive, I believe. Uh, you know, don't quote me on that, but I, I think I read somewhere. I've seen a comic somewhere where his parents actually survive and Peter actually meets with them at some point. I doubt that's what they're actually going to do, and I'm sure they're probably dead. But, you know, there's always that possibility. Um, but yeah, d definitely it was uh, it was well done Nick, and it explained uh, quite a bit. But I do feel as if that plane sequence probably should have taken place uh, in the first film. I don't see the the real need uh, to reveal that now. And you know, I, I wish they would have just gotten all that backstory out of the way, or at least the the gist of it. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, it didn't bother me that much that it was revealed in this um, in this second movie. I just would have preferred for it to have been uh, shown in the first movie instead. But yeah, I, I definitely uh, definitely enjoyed that that reveal and that uh, necessary information overall. And for that reason, I was actually expecting there to be another extra credit scene after like the full credits had gone through, but unfortunately there wasn't, so I wasted my time there as well. So that really just turned out to be a big bunch of nothing, and that was a real disappointment uh, to me. Um, but overall, I did enjoy the movie. I thought it was entertaining, but it wasn't, you know, the, the villains in this movie, or sorry, in, the, in these two movies still have left a lot to be desired. So that's basically my main beef with these two uh, new Spider-Man films in comparison to the last uh, trilogy so far. Um, but overall, it was an okay movie. I definitely preferred uh, Captain America. That just happened to be a more smartly written film with a better villain to me than this one. Uh, but overall, it was okay. And definitely go see it if you like Spider-Man, but just don't expect uh, anything great at all.